This video is a big one, but have no fear. It has lots of interactive code demos in Python and opportunities to work through paper and pencil exercises. This ensures that learning about the critical subject of limits is not only interesting, but also fun. Limits are trivially easy to calculate for a continuous function. So here is a continuous function. What this means is that the relationship between x and y, in this case, is a smooth curve everywhere along the curve. So there are no sudden step changes where the value jumps from one place to another. We have this continuous curve, this continuous gradual curve, and there's no place along the curve where we can't compute the relationship between x and y. So for every value of x, there is a value of y, and we have this nice smooth relationship all along the curve. So it's a continuous function. And when we have such a continuous function, trivially easy to, to calculate limits. So for example, if we have this question, what is the limit as x approaches five in this equation here, x squared plus two x plus two, this will be a familiar equation if you've already been following along with this calculus one subject in my machine learning foundation series. Anyway, that function is drawn out here. And when we ask a question like this, what is the limit as x approaches five? What we're asking is, what is the value of y as x approaches five? So as we get close to this, as we get infinitely close to this value of five, and we can approach it either from the left or from the right, but as we get infinitely close to five, what is the value of y? So if we're evaluating a continuous function, then it's really easy. We can just drop in five for x. So we use this notation here, lim, L-I-M, to ask what is the limit as x approaches five. So we have a rightward facing arrow here. And then we put the equation that we're evaluating that limit for in brackets, though you don't always see it in brackets necessarily. It makes it a little more clear what we're evaluating if you do that though. And so yeah, so in this situation where we have a continuous function, you can just drop in five for x. So this just becomes five squared plus two times five plus two. And you can work through the arithmetic here. Five squared is 25 two times five is 10. And then we add together all of these terms, 25 plus 10 plus two is 37, which is exactly what we can see here visually. As x approaches five, whether it's from the left or from the right, the y value comes out to 37. All right, so as you may expect, by the way, I've been teeing this up, not all functions are continuous. So some functions are not continuous. And here's an example of one of those. So with a function like this, if x is equal to one, then we have one minus one in the denominator of this fraction. And you can't divide anything by zero. That does not compute. So you could not evaluate the limit as x approaches one with this particular function. So this may look <laughs> like a plot and it may kind of look, you know, you can see visually that as x approaches one, either from the left or from the right, as we get close to that one value, clearly the, the limit is two. The y value comes out to two but we can't just drop in one for x in this situation because we won't get two out of it. We can't calculate anything because we're gonna have that zero denominator. So what can we do? Well, let's jump to a hands-on code demo. All right, so here we are in the Calculus One Jupyter Notebook and we're in the limits section of that notebook. The first cell here is just to plot out the plot that I had on the preceding slide. So this is that function that we've been working with so far in this Jupyter notebook where y is equal to x squared plus two x plus two. And 
on a slide a little while ago, we were we were looking at evaluating the limit as x approaches five with that equation. So here's the code if you were interested in plotting that plot out. But what we're interested in right now is evaluating this limit. So this is the equation that we had most recently on the slides. We're trying to evaluate the limit as x approaches one, but we can't just drop one in for x because we have zero in the denominator. So let's start off by converting this function into a Python function. So in the numerator, we have x squared minus one. And then in the denominator, we have x minus one. And that's it. That's all there is to this function. So if we want to evaluate this function anywhere else other than where x is equal to one, it's no problem. We can just drop in the x value that we're interested in and boom, we get the y value. So where x is equal to two with this function, y is equal to three. So we could trivially evaluate the limit as x approaches two by dropping two in for x and we'll get up an answer three. However, if we tried to do that at one, it's not going to work. For the reasons we already discussed, we're gonna get a division by zero error. And so, okay, well, that's not gonna work. What can we do? Well, the most intuitive idea is to just empirically figure out what happens as we get infinitely close to one. So, you know, let's approach one from the left-hand side. So getting values that are closer and closer to one from the left. So, you know, values that push very, very close to one are 0 0.9, 0 0.999. You could go even further to 0 0.99999, whatever. You're getting closer and closer to one from the left. And when we do that, we see that we get Y values that are closer and closer to two. So it's becoming clear that from the left, at least, as we approach one, y comes out to two. And then the same thing actually happens from the right. So as we get closer and closer and closer to one from the right-hand side, so 1.1, 1.001, you can try 1.000001, whatever. The closer and closer and closer you get to one, the closer your y value gets to two. So it's clear empirically that the answer to this is two. And we can plot that out and see it. We talked about this on the slides a bit already, but we've now shown also in code how if you get closer and closer and closer to one, if you get infinitely close at this point here, then the limit comes out to two. In some cases, however, we can actually solve the limit through algebra where we don't need to do a bunch of calculations and try to get closer and closer and closer to a value like one. In some cases, we can use factoring. So I don't necessarily expect you to know algebra well enough to be able to do factoring, but if you do know how to do factoring, if you are familiar with that, then you'll notice that a expression like this, x squared minus one, that factors into x minus one times x plus one. And when we do that, we can then cross out x minus one in both the numerator and the denominator, which leaves us with this much nicer expression for evaluating the limit as x approaches one, because now, we don't have that icky problem of getting a divide by zero error in the denominator. We can now simply substitute one in four X in this expression. And so one plus one <laughs> is two. That is pretty straightforward. So again, I don't expect you, you don't need to learn factoring in order to understand the rest of this calculus subject. But if you happen to already know how to factor, then this is a nifty trick for solving limits. All right, so in some cases we can use algebra, but in others we just can't. There's no way with this function here, sine x divided by x, to be able to factor or rearrange with any other kind of algebraic tricks 
in order to avoid having zero in the denominator when we're trying to calculate the limit as x approaches zero. So yeah, so we wouldn't be able to do any algebraic tricks, but we could still approach the limit. That would still work in this scenario here. So here's a plot of this sine x divided by x function. Let's do a hands-on code demo quickly to see this empirically in practice. Alrighty, we're back in our Calculus 1 notebook. Here is our expression from the slides. So let's create a function that represents this function. I'm going to call it sine function. And the numerator is simply the sine of x. And the denominator is x. That's all that this function does. So you could calculate a y value for any value other than x equals zero. But when x is equal to zero, we get the division by zero related error, just like in the earlier function where we tried to uh, divide by zero. However, just like in that earlier circumstance, we can empirically get closer and closer to zero. So approaching from the right, say, 0 0.1, 0 0.001, 0 0.0001, we'll see that we get values that are closer and closer to a y of 1. And then same thing if we approach from the left-hand side, so negative 0.1, negative 0 0.001, negative 0 0.0001, whatever, you're going to get y values that are closer and closer and closer to 1. So if we now want to plot our entire function out, we can do that. So even though we can't calculate y where x is equal exactly to 0, we can get extremely close to 0. We can have our limit approach 0, either from the left or from the right. And as we get infinitely close to 0 from either side, it becomes apparent that y is equal to 1. So on a technical note here, Something that I haven't been doing in my matplotlib charts, I didn't take the time to figure out how to illustrate this in a nice way, is that your undefined points, so the points where you can't calculate y exactly, because dropping x into your expression in those circumstances leads to you know, some incalculable point, maybe due to a divide by zero error or some other issue. So in those kinds of situations where you have an undefined point like this, you should technically have this empty looking circle with the rest of the curve, in this case a straight line, passing through that empty point. And so this just makes clear that there is an undefined point to people who are looking at it. Okay, one final point here that's critical for us to be able to tackle differentiation coming up next is that it's common for limits to approach infinity. This is something I want you to be aware of. So for example, with this expression here, 25 divided by x, we could evaluate what is the limit as x approaches infinity. So we can see plotted out here 25 over x. And as x approaches infinity, we can see that y gets closer and closer and closer and closer to zero, infinitely close to zero. Let's jump to a hands-on code demo to see that in practice. Returning once again to our Calculus 1 notebook, we have our expression from the slides encapsulated here in a Python function. So it's just 25 divided by x. That's all it does. And as we approach infinity, so here is an x value of 1,000, 1 times 10 to the power of 3 in scientific notation. We get a value that's kind of close to 0. But as these values get bigger and bigger, so this is a million, 1 times 10 to the power of 6 in scientific notation, that gets really close to zero. And so we can plot over the whole range of x that we've been using throughout this notebook, so from negative 10 all the way up to positive 10. And when we plot that out, we get something kind of funky here. 
because we actually can't evaluate this function at zero. We can't divide by zero. So we have this quirk as a result of matplotlib connecting the x value just to the left of zero in our range of thousand x values from negative 10 to positive 10. There's one that gets very close to zero from left. And then there's another one that gets very close to zero from the right and matplotlib, you know, it's trying to do us a favor and connect those points. But it's a little bit confusing because we can't actually evaluate at zero. And so we have two separate parts of the function here. They don't connect at all. So we need to figure out a way to plot this without that connection happening. So in order to do that, I'm going to split our array x into two halves, a left half and a right half. So the left x has all of the x values that are lower than zero in it, and the right x has all of the x values that are greater than zero in it. And then we can pass those left x values and right x values into our infinity function separately, giving us a left y and a right y. And now we can plot those out as two separate plot calls. And I fixed the color to one color because otherwise matplotlib will again try to do you a favor and give you two different colored curves. But because they're the same curve, I want them the same color. So now we have our left half of the curve and our right half of the curve plotted correctly. And this is what I had shown on the slides earlier on here. Brilliant. That's all of the content for limits, the first segment of this Calculus 1 subject. I've got a handful of exercises coming up to test your comprehension of limits, and then we're moving onward to segment 2, in which we make use of limits to calculate derivatives. In this segment on limits, we covered what calculus is, including a brief history of calculus. We then dug into the method of exhaustion and tied it to how we calculate limits. Recalling that in my Machine Learning Foundation series, we're currently undertaking the third of eight subjects in that series, so Calculus 1 on limits and derivatives. The Calculus 1 subject is broken into three segments. We just finished limits, and up next is computing derivatives with differentiation. To be sure not to miss the next video in this series, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for taking part in this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and comment. To be sure not to miss any of my content, head to johncrone.com and sign up for my email newsletter. You're also welcome to add me on LinkedIn. Simply mention that you're a viewer of the Machine Learning Foundation series. And finally, you can follow me on Twitter too if that's your social medium of choice.